What's up, everybody? We're back here with the Let's Play series, 100% free to play. I think this is episode 37. Uh, but if you are new, because there's actually a whole bunch of new people joining the game, definitely check out episode number one, number two, watch, listen, learn about all kinds of crazy tips and tricks on how to play this game as a free to play player. And you may be wondering why there is a lot of new players. Well, they've done a big promotion with Guildify, a crypto gaming community that has supposedly like over 280,000 users. So this also brings up a very interesting point as well. Uh, as we are gonna re-roll our dailies and get the ones that we need, the easy ones, we'll talk about this. So this game is a crypto game. This is not designed for MMORPG players. That doesn't mean that MMORPG players won't have a good time here or won't enjoy it or won't make money or just have fun, for example. This is actually the best time. This is the Asian server though. So this is actually the best time for MMORPG players, veterans, people that have played Arc Age, people that have played other MMORPGs games before to jump into the game and actually be almost even with the pay to win whales. In two months, in three months, in six months, in a year, the whales of the game are gonna be so far ahead of a free to play player that you're not gonna be able to hurt them or damage them. But at this point, you are able to you know hurt damage there's only like one person in the entire server that you pretty much can't damage as a free-to-play player and that is the you know the top player the ganama who's like you know close to 19,000 in gear score now so everyone else is almost exactly the same power level as you even if they've spent some money or you know Paid, paid to win in this game per se, right? All right, so we got 20 on that one, unfortunately. Could not get a lower one. So let's take a look at this, as we said. So the top player is, well, well, Genama actually has changed his equipment. So he used to be around 18,000. Yeah, he took off necklaces, earrings, and so forth. So he's down in the rankings for some odd reason. But yes, this is the top player with around like 18,000, 19,000 gear score. And now currently the new number one is up here at 17K. So the number one player is pretty much the only person that you won't be able to hit as a free to play player. The number two, it's gonna be iffy. You're probably not gonna be able to kill him. You might be able to hit him. But then everyone else, cause as a free to play player, you get to 12,000 gear score. And you can see, so the top players, the top 10 players in the leaderboards are at 16,000. And we go down here, the top 50 players in the game are at 14,300. And then all the way down here, the top 100 is at 13,100. So it is a very, very, very close, you know, gear score point level. Because again, as a free to play player, you get 12,000 gear score and the people that are at 13, they just have upgraded their armor a little bit. Like they, they're not that much stronger. They're like two or three pieces of gear upgraded. That means they played the game, they got cores. They could potentially even be free to play players right now, right? It is actually possible for free to play players to be on the, the top 100 in the leaderboards. In you know six months, that will be impossible. There will be no way for a free to play player to be on the top 100 leaderboards because the paying players are gonna have, you know, just constant advantages over and over and over again. All right, so grain, we're good on the grain. We're good there. We got a high monster kills, 300. Uh, I don't know if we wanna do that. We got low XP. Let's go ahead and change this one because we definitely want high on this. We got low again. Got low again. So, okay, now we're at a choice. Do we reroll the low quest or do we reroll this high monster quest? Are we gonna attempt to kill 300 monsters today? I don't know, we have a server maintenance today. I do have some time to play, but uh, I guess, okay, we'll, we'll roll the, the top one. We'll see if we can kill 300 mobs today. So it doesn't take that long. All right, we got medium rank there. So now we can go and do these labor coin purses. So coin purses, we need to open up 20 coin purses. So let's go knock these guys out of the way. So 
So, yep, looks like we might be trying to kill 300 mobs. And look at our BSLT. Our BSLT, we are at 14 BSLT right now, guys. We are very, very close to getting that 30 BSLT that we need to unlock the second part of the Arc Pass. Very, very cool, very exciting. We do have 900 of this Archeum, which is the main currency that you need in Arc World to upgrade your gear. The second currency that we need is labor, and we don't actually have that much labor. We only got 760, and we are using some labor to open up these coin purses. Each one of these guys costs six labor points. And there we go. So we've done that. Next up, we need to synthesize items. So we need to upgrade an item 20 times. So this is gonna cost us 20 labor points. Let's go ahead and work on our chest piece because that's what we've been doing. We've been upgrading our chest piece. So we're gonna go upgrade and we got two infusions right there. So we can go ahead and put those in. Hey, and we are up the purple tier. So the game uses a coloring grading system. So you can see we went from blue to purple and we still have more to go. So we need to open up more of these infusions. Let's go ahead and open up these guys. These white ones are actually free to open. They do not cost any labor. They don't give that much XP, but we're really just doing this to get our quest done. We don't really care too much about the XP. And so if we did the green ones, we'd get more XP, but this also costs us one labor point to open up those bags. And I think at this point, the labor is a little bit more valuable. Like we use the labor to convert items into BSLT. All right, so one more. And there we go. So finish that. And you'll, you'll notice too, we're getting XP. So as we are doing labor activities, we gain XP. And then also as we complete these quests, we gain XP. So if you want to level up and you're at, out of quests, because at level 50, you run out of quests. You can level up by simply doing all of your Arc Pass quests. This will get you about 10,000 each experience points. So a total of about 40,000 XP per day, which is a solid amount of XP. And then the only other option that you have is to really just grind mobs and go that route because there's no, no other quest. You also have the daily Rift quests. So we will go ahead and turn these in. These are gonna get us some labor as well. So these are very important, 100, 100 labor, a little bit of Archeum. You always wanna make sure that you do the daily quest in the moon tab. That is the single most important thing for a free to play player is doing all of your daily quests every single day if possible. The next thing is harvesting your crops. So you have to find a public farm. There's a lot of public farms. There's like one in every single zone. And then you have to get lucky and find a spot, a location to plant things in the public farm. And when you do harvest something, you do want to replant something right away so no one comes in and steals your location. Because as we're talking right now, someone can come in and go, I'm going to put down my tree right there and then take this spot from us. And there's literally nothing that we can do about it so as soon as you harvest your item, you want to put down the next one as soon as possible. And you always have to you know, watch out about the camera. <clears throat> so the camera angle will allow you to place or not place. You can see right there, we can't place. But if we adjust the camera just a little bit, we can now place this. You also have to be very, very careful about the placement of your character, the placement of your mounts because of the mount, the mount was right here and we couldn't actually uh, you know, spawn down the plant because the mount was in the way. So all these things you have to take into consideration. Next up, one of our daily things that we like to do is check on the prices. Ooh, this guy is potentially down to 1.4. Let's see, um, nope, that was a fake price there, 0 0.022. So it's still fairly cheap actually for skiing. And then we go and look and see what the processed version of this is selling for. Because the easiest way to make money is to convert five of those materials, five skin, into one processed item and then sell it on the auction house. Everything to earn BSLT, you have to sell things on the auction house. 
So you could also potentially just flip items and that doesn't cost anything. So if, if we saw a bunch of processed fabric and they were selling for 0 0.01 instead of 0 0.015 and there was a big gap in price, we could actually buy all those up and then relist them at the higher price. Also selling them in smaller quantities. As you can see here, this is the perfect setup. You got people selling things in 15s and 16s and 50s. Small, small quantities like that is what you want to have listing on the auction house. So we'll come back and we'll keep an eye on this to see if we get any cheap skiing right there. Next up, we go ahead and take a look at logs. So same thing, five logs will convert into one lumber. So we got 0 0.14, 0 0.014, and then the lumber price is 0.1. So not a very good conversion. We don't really want to spend our labor on that. We'll go check our lump of ore. So 0 0.01 right here, and then our processed ore is up to 0 0.095. So this one, if you were like hard pressed and you really wanted to, you know, earn some BSLT today, this would be the best conversion at right at the moment. Obviously, it changes every single minute, every single second because new things come up, prices do fluctuate. So you always got to keep an eye on these things to make sure, you know, if you're overpaying or not and also capitalizing on other people's mistakes because that's how you make your BSLT is if you see someone that is selling things really, really cheap and you're able to sell them for more because everything, all the BSLT that you are earning is currently coming only from the auction house here. So we have these guys, we we'll always keep an eye on these guys as well, Faint Stone of Rift. And that looks to be about it. Let's check up one more thing. We have Shadowgun Ore. This is the item that you can process once you get 300 Archeum and then you get three of the processed fabric, processed uh, lumber, processed ores. You could turn that into 10 of these guys. And this is pretty much your bread and butter as a free to play player of how to spend your Archeum. So this is not bad, 0.34 for these prices on these things. So let's go take a look at the mailbox real quick and then we're off on our journey to kill 300 mobs. I don't know if we're gonna do it all in one sitting or not, but yes, we will be grinding away but back to the point, this game is designed for crypto people. This game is not designed for MMO players. If you want to play an MMO RPG, so all these are failed auctions, looks like these are going to be all our skill books. An MMO RPG that will have a lot more content and more activities and things to do. You know, there's a game called Arc Age. You can go ahead and play that. That's what this game is based on. It has a ton more content. It has a ton more activities. It's a way more, you know, free to play friendly per se, but it doesn't have the crypto aspects. It doesn't have, you know, the play to earn aspect, the cashing out, the buying and selling of items for real life monies. You can't actually earn any money on that game. So this is a different world. This is, game is designed for crypto markets and crypto gamers. And all the advertisements that the game company, that XL Games has been doing, has been targeted towards the crypto gamers. So we touched upon this before. In the beginning of the server, we expected about, personally, this is my personal opinion on, on this game and how things were going to uh, progress. In the beginning, we thought it was gonna be about 75% MMORPG players, players that have played Arc Age, players that have played other games like WoW, Final Fantasy XIV, and so forth, Guild Wars 2, etc., right? And then over time, that number would actually decrease significantly. And over time, it would go down to as low as maybe like 20 or 25% of MMORPG players. And then it would end up being 75% just pure crypto gamers, people that like NFTs and like playing crypto games, play to earn games, and so forth. So that's what we're seeing too. We're seeing the, the marketing. The game is designed for these crypto gamers, not MMORPG gamers per se. MMORPG gamers can have a ton of fun though in this, especially if you have played Arc Age before because it is very, very similar to Arc Age, right? So the skills and the combat is almost identical to Arc Age. Things, some things have changed a little bit. What's up, dude? Uh, thanks for the shout out there. So yeah, so some things have changed from Arc Age. And so that is one of the joys is that, yes, you are familiar with the game, but you have differences and it's gonna be a fresh and different experience. So also the end game content is significantly different than what is in Arc Age. And then, but with that degree, it is mainly a player versus player PVP game. 
and it is mainly a 50 versus 50 raid versus raid game too. So it's not a solo heavy game. They are releasing 1v1 arenas and 3v3 arenas as well. And so those are going to be giving out BSLT for top fighting players. So top ranking players will be earning BSLT cryptocurrency, you know, money for doing well in arena. So this will be more a little bit solo 1v1 or 3v3 friendly, and you can actually earn, you know, money by doing that. But as of now, the game is heavily focused and it will probably stay focused on 50 versus 50 raid versus raid battles. And so at that point, when you, most of your earnings comes from a 50 versus 50 environment, you don't actually have to spend a ton of money. Like you just have to be a good teammate to actually, you know, progress and be in these parties and be in these raids. So even, you know, six months down the line, as long as you are a good, uh, you know, teammate doing everything and you know correctly how to play your character and how to, you know, like raid per se, you can actually, you know, hang with the pay to win whales that are playing this game, people that have spent thousands upon thousands of dollars. And it will get harder and harder as time progresses, of course, because the paid players essentially are getting, they're essentially paying like a subscription almost, right? So the houses and the land act as a like semi-passive way to earn labor and archium. They do have to log in and they do have to click some buttons and so forth. But every single day, they're gonna be generating a lot more labor and archium thanks to the houses. So it kind of acts as like a passive way to earn resources in game. If you don't have that, the only way that you can get these resources is by actively playing and doing the daily quests, but you only get a small amount of resources around 200 or 300 labor and archium per day. So the passive way of getting this stuff, which is about 2,300 labor and archium per day is significantly better than a free to play player, which I mean, it makes sense, right? If you're paying money, if you're spending, you know, 200 bucks, 300 bucks, you should get an advantage, right? Like, yes, the world is not fair. You know, paying money gets you an advantage. And almost anything and everything, if you have a sports environment too, say you pay for a coach, well, they're paying money to get an advantage in, you know, baseball, football, soccer, whatever kind of game. So anywhere in, in you know, real life as well, like you pay money, you get an advantage. You have better shoes for basketball and things like that. You know, like coaches, like I said, better equipment all these things better food food is a very deceptive thing like if you're eating healthier your body is generally going to be feeling better and you're going to be in better shape which will allow you to perform better in sports right you know generally so all these things if you're spending money you are getting an advantage and yes people are like well that's not fair well i mean life is like that like no matter what, money does kind of rule the world, and that's part of the reason why uh, you know play-to-earn games are so popular. And people are like, "Ooh, I can make money by playing a game." There's a lot of really shitty clicker crypto games out there that do nothing but click a button. Like, hey, I'm gonna farm. I'm gonna gather my hay, or I'm gonna gather my milk, and I'm earning crypto. Like these games, you literally do nothing but click a button to gather milk and then I sell the milk like and a lot of people play these games because it's all about that money and making cash by playing a game quote unquote so this MMORPG here Arc World is one of the first games where you can actually play the game and it actually is a real game this is why this game, in my opinion, will stand out compared to the rest of the NFT crypto game market because there's actual solid, good gameplay. The gameplay is nothing compared to a legitimate, you know, MMORPG like World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy XIV, right? Those games that have been out for years, they have tons and tons of content and there's just a lot of things to do. Even the original version of this game, which is called Arc Age, the content level is incredibly high compared to this game. And that's partly due to the fact that it has been out for, you know, seven, eight, nine years, a good amount of time. This game is in its infancy. This game is less than two months old right now. We are currently, I think, around like 33 days old for the server. 
and this is also strictly an Asian server right now. Anyone can play though. There is no region lock. So we are from America and we are playing on this game. And you may be wondering why are you playing on an Asian server? You have terrible ping. Well, I actually enjoy crypto play to earn, you know, games. And I think this could be the future of the MMO genre. And I do think that this model that they are using is incredibly good. I think this is almost like the perfect model for an MMORPG. It's a free to play game where you can earn by simply playing the game and progressing. You essentially get to sell all of your progress if you want. So you can sell your experience points. You can sell your other resources like gold and labor and all these resources and everything can be sold. You can go and farm items like weapons and armors, not necessarily in this game yet. They don't have weapons and armors that you can get from monsters, but there will be most likely in the future drops from you know bosses, from raid bosses and big bosses and dungeon bosses that you can go ahead and sell and then you know earn money that way. So all these things, these these situations in this game are pretty much ideal for what I think the future of gaming should be because a lot of people hate the free-to-play games that have a cash shop, right? The cash shop that then sells you know, EXP boosts or power boosts or weapons or armor or stats or even just like pets and costumes that don't really do anything. But people still get up in arms and like, man, this is bullshit. This is pay to win, right? They're upset because there's a cash shop. Well, there has to be a cash shop because the game needs to make money. And so then the games have now designed battle passes and they started going into this battle pass system and people are like okay this is fine so people like to be rewarded for playing a game and earn some rewards via a battle pass so games like fortnite have definitely popularized this battle pass system and a lot of games now are using it and again that's just another sense of how to get money from consumers from the gamers well you know giving them some slight advantages out of it it's another way of pay to win but people are more accepting about this method than just directly selling on the cash shop probably because you actually have to play and earn the stuff in game via doing the battle pass quests and missions but overall people are now coming to realize that games companies need to make money like if they don't make money, the game shuts down. A lot of games have shut down in the past years and people are like, well, that game was awesome. That game was fun. Well, sure, you might have thought it was awesome. You might have thought it was fun, but people didn't pay money to it and the game shut down. And so then the question goes back to them. Did you actually spend 50 bucks in the game? Did you spend 100 bucks in the game? Did you buy things in the game? And if the answer to those questions are no, well then you're part of the problem of why the game didn't stay around, why the game shut down. Is if you didn't actually put any money in it and you thought the game was really good, then yeah, you're at fault for shutting the game down because you didn't support the game and the game company. The game company spent millions upon millions of dollars investing and building this game. And if the players don't reward the game company for doing a quote unquote good job, then what else are they supposed to do? They're gonna have to sell you know, weapons. They're gonna have to sell armor. They're gonna have to sell RNG boxes to make that money or they're gonna have to shut the servers down. And then the game dies and goes away. Like, which poison do you want? So if there is a game that you think is actually doing a really good job, you should actually support them with money. Yes, I know not everyone has a ton of money. You can't throw around thousands upon thousands of dollars. That's okay. Even just throwing a couple bucks, five or 10 bucks here and there on a game that you actually really enjoy means a ton, uh, I would imagine, to the developers of those games. And then also even the community. The community doesn't see the benefits directly but they are indirectly benefiting because now the game is like, oh, cool, we have more future development going on because people are actually buying something or supporting the game. So it's an interesting system where I think gamers are finally starting to open up and realize that they have to support the things that they like and the things that they want to succeed. And if they don't, even if the game is quote unquote good, it's not gonna succeed. And that's also part of the reason why we're playing on the Asian server here is I want to support this game. We are also learning significantly amount of information for the North America launch. 
So in North America, I do plan on being, you know, I guess considered a mega whale, spending a lot of money. Uh, and in part, it's because of how well the Asian server here has developed. So if you had spent any money in the beginning of this game, you've made a significant amount of profit. You've like almost doubled your money, like bare minimum for pretty much anything in this game. That's, that's pretty crazy. So within like one month, you've at least like doubled your money. So the amount of profit is, is kind of nuts. It's pretty insane, right? So if you can, if, if that is replicable, if you can do that again in the North America servers, I don't think it's going to happen, right? Like I, I doubt, like I doubt you can probably three X or four X your money in the North America servers. Like it just, it shouldn't happen, right? It shouldn't be that easy to print money. Like money doesn't grow on trees, but there is a small chance that it could happen again. Like depending on how many people enjoy the game, how many people spend money on the game. And even here in the Asian server, there's actually not that many people that are spending money on the game, right? There was about 400 people that bought NFTs before the game launched. And then afterwards, there's about 2000 people that have bought some of the cryptocurrency. We also don't know how many people in game have actually, you know, bought cryptocurrency. There seems to be about maybe 10 to 15,000 players playing this game. That's my, my guesstimate. You see right now we have a 4,688 players online that have done the jury quest. So I always love using this metric because this is a quest line that you must do. You have to be over level 30. You cannot have any crime points to start the quest line. So there's a lot of requirements and it shows you how many people are actively on right, online right now. They also did say in the beginning of the game that the server capacity was 5,000. So we now know that they've increased the server capacity because this queue has been over 5,000 before. And we do know that from prior experience that in Arc Age, they were able to have as much as 15,000 players online at one time uh, because that's what they had before they, you know, like, oh no, we can't, we can't have any more people online. Like that was the absolute maximum server capacity. They're like, we're at 200% capacity, they told us in Arc Age. So we do know that they can hold a maximum of 15,000 before like a lot of server issues happen and crashes and weird bugs, etc. right? So they haven't come out and directly said, but just looking at the jury queue, because there's also a ton and ton of bots as well. And people are like, well, that number right there in the jury queue, that's just a bunch of bots, right? No, because again, there's a quest line that you have to do and you have to backtrack to actually do the quest line. You can check out the jury quest video on the channel here to see what the jury quest is all about, how to do it, how to get into that queue and potentially, you know, be one of those numbers. But I would imagine that most of the people that are watching this video are not in that jury queue. You know, most of the people that are average players have no idea that there is a jury quest line that you need to do because it's sort of hidden. And if you didn't play Arc Age and you didn't know about it, the game doesn't really tell you about it at all. So it's something that you kind of have to discover on your own or kind of know already. So it's a very hidden like quest line, right? So with the fact that there's nearly 5,000 people online that have done that quest line, there's probably, you know, 2,000 or so bots online because there's this is a free to play game, right? It, bots, they cost them nothing to create a bot. They endlessly create more bots. Like surprisingly, we haven't seen any bots run by us yet. So maybe they've done a really good job right now and they've killed a bunch of bots. But normally, if you, if you notice, we've been here in this grinding spot for, you know, maybe three or four days now, uh, you know, probably about five or six episodes of the Let's Play series. And we've killed quite a few bots. We've seen a bunch of bots run past us because yes, there is a bot problem. Like. The bots are trying to earn money just like everyone else in the game. And the bots are slowly, slowly, slowly dying over time because, you know, the game company is banning and destroying bots, but the bots are resilient. The bots are coming back. The bots are like, I don't care. It just takes me an email address to make a new crypto wallet and then I'm back in the game. Like the bots are relentless. And even though the bots are only making, you know, like 50 cents or a dollar per character, maybe a little bit more, like they're still happy because they're making thousands upon thousands of characters just doing it like crazy. 
And so, eventually, when the bots realize like, hey, this is not profitable, my energy cost, my uh, you know time and effort is not worthwhile. Like, once the programs, the automatic systems that they're using get destroyed and caught and like banned, then they'll be like, okay, I'll give up and the bots will be gone. Thankfully, right now, the economy is set up in a way where the bots really cannot affect it at all. Like, the only thing that bots can actually farm right now really is tier four weapons. And those are already at the very bottom price of one BSLT. Like, they can get tier four weapons with like the best stats. They can get ultra, like ultra lucky, get the blue stats on the tier four weapons. And they could sell them for maybe like, you know, 25 BSLT, but that's like one in a hundred or something, right? Like it's very, very rare to get those amazing stat rolls. So that's what they're, they're aiming for, it looks like. Unless there's something else that we don't know about that the bots are like, hey, secretly I'm making tons of money. But I don't think so. Like we are very knowledgeable in this and you can check out a bunch of other videos. You can see all the information and tips and tricks. Uh, and it's just because we've been playing this game for a long time. We've been playing it pretty much nonstop for, you know, the last about two months. We've played Arcage, the game, the predecessor to this game, for a good about four or five years. We did take some breaks in between there. But we definitely have played and ha are very familiar with the company, with XL Games, the company behind this game. So I do greatly thank anyone that is watching in here. Uh, if you haven't already, please drop a comment down there. Say hi. i uh, love to hear from you guys. Drop a question if you have any questions. Uh, if you haven't, again, hit that like button as well. All these things not only you know help encourage me to keep doing videos and showing off the game and talking about the game, but it also helps the game itself out. And that is the biggest point of it. And helping the game grow in any way, shape, or form helps everyone so if you are invested or if you are you know playing this game or you want the game to succeed do anything and everything that you can to actually support the game and the easiest way to do that is to watch streams watch videos hit like buttons share videos tell your friends about it etc you know all those things that are very cliche and everyone says on youtube and twitch and all those things but it's honestly the truth like the game is you know, a little bit reliant on the community. If the community isn't supporting the game, you don't have to support it financially, right? So if you don't have money, if you tell people about it, if you share the videos, maybe you end up getting a guy or a friend or a girl who plays the game and then spends 50 bucks. And so you spend no money on the game, but your friend spent 50 bucks. And so right there, you're actually directly helping the game and the development of the future content of this game. So just because like you didn't spend money or maybe your friend didn't spend money, but maybe they told someone else and they got someone else and eventually someone will be like, yeah, I'm gonna support the game and I'll spend money on it, right? That's what kind of happens in that regard. There's also the, the bad side effects, right? So there's the psychological aspect of, wow, man, I can't progress my character. I'm not getting any stronger. All my enemies are getting stronger as well. Oh, I'm gonna go and put 50 bucks into the game and make my character stronger. So there's the reverse psychology, psychology effect there, whatever that word is I'm trying to say. The psychological effect of like, I need to spend money to you know keep up with the Joneses per se, uh, to stay competitive with other players. So that also will play a factor in some people who are, you know end up supporting the game and, and spending money on the game or buying the cryptocurrency, the blue salt tokens. So we're at 107 kills right now. Let's see. We've done everything else except for the kill quest. I think we're going to end up calling it a day right now. I'll take a little break here. We'll come back maybe later. We'll see how things go. Uh, we do have a maintenance coming up, right? And so this is a very, very big maintenance. We might get some new content. We might get new monsters. We might get stronger monsters. Uh, we're not sure what exactly. They did say we're going to get stuff in October. So this is the first content update potential in October because they do all their content updates on the Thursday in Asia area. So right now, technically, it's Wednesday in America for me, but it's technically Thursday morning in Asia land, wherever they are over there. Uh, Korea, I think it is. 
uh, yeah, they're in they're in Korea, but the server is hosted in Singapore. So all those time zone things and everything happen, and yeah, it's already Thursday over there. But for me, it happens on quote unquote the Wednesdays. So we'll have to see. And they've been doing a really good job of giving us something new or adjusting the game every single Thursday. So there hasn't been anything major. Like we might get the arenas, we might get the new mobs, which would be really cool if we get like ancestral level one or level two mobs, a uh, hunting zone. We might get the Luna gems. Uh, we might get absolutely nothing, or we might get another rebalance of something. A new crafting recipe, even just a new crafting recipe would be really cool and actually could potentially stimulate the economy a lot. So before we head off, let's go ahead and check on the auction house for skiing and see how much this is, see if it's a uh, down in value. Because generally, a lot of times it will be, because there's a guy right here who's selling a thousand skiing and almost no one is going to want to buy a thousand skiing. I think I see a bot in the back. Nope. That's not a bot. It's a human. It's a high level human. Why is he over here? 45. He does have like the bot name though. Interesting, interesting enough. All right. So we're not buffed though. We're not gonna kill them with this. Let's see how much damage it does. Let's see, significantly less damage when we're unbuffed. And we're probably actually gonna die off of this. Yep. All right, so we will head out. We are back at the temple right now. Thank you for watching as always. I will see you into the next one. Good luck and let's finish up with, uh, with a couple of these lucky coin purses just because we're feeling really lucky today. I do really want to open all these guys, but we don't have enough labor to open all these guys. So let's go ahead and open, uh, open like 10 of these. So inside these lucky coin purses, we can potentially get a land NFT. And that's worth approximately around 400 US, 450 US dollars right now, give or take. So it does cost five labor to open. And if you fail, you do get a small amount of Archeum. You can see two Archeum, three Archeum, three Archeum. There was a report that someone said that they got like 1,600 Archeum. All right, so nothing in that last one right here. Nope. All right, guys, thanks for watching. As always, I will talk to you in the next one, and good luck. Happy hunting.